Welcome to Cat the Minion Patreon. I'm doing the October Taurus deep dive horoscope style tarot reading. Um, using my spread called Roadblock Moguls. And you'll see what it is when I lay it out. The reading is a $37 reading, but with the charms added to it. It's a $44 reading if you want to get one for yourself. Um, so this is for anyone who has Taurus, um, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, Venus. If you're feeling the effects of Uranus retrograding in Taurus, Venus is currently in Leo, so if you're feeling, you might be feeling the effects of that as well. Mercury is in the sister sign of Libra, which is also ruled by Venus, so you might be getting a second hand whiff of that as well. Um, so, or, you know, anyone who just feels drawn to watch this reading. And... I'm going to get this set up here, so put these up here for a minute. Um, so I'm using the Thoth deck. This is going to be for what I'm calling the 5D squared. It's like a, your higher self, we're sort of familiar with that, but I call it, I think of it as um, a bunch of higher selves that are in a, a soul group kind of situation who are working together on a similar project, the same kind of problem. They're all doing part of the same scientific experiment and then they go into their individual higher selves um, and bring down into this three-dimensional plane what it is they're trying to do. So I'm using the Thoth deck I guess that's a double, to, in this, the column, no, the row, using the Thoth deck in the row that's for the 5D squared. And I have the three rows, you'll see in a second, and I have four columns. The four columns that I have are Wands Energy, which is the sort of gut feeling, the, the core drive, the sort of life purpose, the modus operandi, the center of the muse, and so on. Now this column that I'm using the Aquarian Tarot for is the 5D, right? This is the group, and this is you going off to work on your own part of the project. This is where the communication breakdown happens, because the third row here is going to be your 3D self. It's what you're picking up from what's coming down from here. Oh, I got one that's flipped over down here. second column here is cups energy. So that's your emotional content. It can also be what you're picking up in the psychic waters. What's going on in your heart chakra? The third column is swords energy. This is thoughts and perceptions and communication. 
And the fourth column is pentacles energy. That can be your physical body. It can be manifestation. It can be money. It can be resources. And this third row down here for the 3D, I'm using my phrase deck that I made. It's paraphrased book quotes, essentially. And I've written down the page number that I found them on to give a numeric code as well. Um, some of them were like manuals, some of them were magazines, some of them were textbook type things, um, encyclopedias, and some of them were novels. So it's just kind of a mix of, some of these are going backwards now. Okay, I found the section that's going the wrong way. <sighs> These are invitation cards that came with matching envelopes that I was using for my for my chapbook packs. Oh man, I just screwed up the, the flow over here too. screwed up the order of my envelopes now I gotta fix that somehow oh I see where I see maybe where it goes maybe. Um, I just messed up my envelopes over here <clears throat> oh, that's... okay I guess there's three of them there like taking triples, but I did once before. Okay. Now I do I am also going to get a card from the Mystical Shaman Oracle here and that's gonna be for the wrap up Oracle card for wrap up and advice. Charms out of the burps before I start. I think that's it. sip of water before I get this going. Okay. We just start with the wands energy. Make sure this is all in the frame first. My tripod is wob is soggy lately, and it's not been very cooperative. <laughs> okay, so that's that's everybody. Okay, I like how both this paper bag brown and the mystical shaman oracle are basically the same color as my table. 
Okay, so Lon's energy, I guess this one goes here. Oh, this is a double. I didn't realize that. So we have the Emperor and the Fool inverted. So this is air energy, Uranus, which is currently retrograde in Taurus. We have the Emperor, Aries energy. Mars currently retrograding in Aries, but the Emperor coming in upright. Also foundational energy. I just heard like I'm gonna rule the world and then I got a little bit of I think it's Tears for Fears. It's a song, um Everybody wants to rule the world. It's uh it's the song in the credits of the movie Real Genius. I think it's nineteen eighty four, it's got Val Kilmer in it. It's my favorite movie. It's really funny. Also, notice that the Emperor is looking away from the Fool, but Aries energy is also sort of a generative beginning phase, right? It's like spring energy, and the Fool is also a beginning. He's looking away from it. I get this, and I just got the idea of last spring. And this portal is kind of wound up like a spring. So we'll see what this means. Let me see what this charm is that came out nearby. Ah. It is the phone. The cellular telephone with text messages. Interesting. Now Uranus controls innovation in, in technology and communication, and that was reversed. So I I get this idea that Taurus is getting this idea that they're supposed to bring people back to review their previous communications with other people and gain some kind of, of maturity and clarity from it. Interesting. Let's see how this message is coming down into the 3D. Now I have in reverse the ink symbol so this is sort of life, but also gives me this, usually this concept of past life. Right, I might need to go and s review how I was communicating with people for all of eternity. Right, I'm... I'm like life cut short in some way. Entering the darkness with elegance. This is 141, but the way I've got it written, it looks like the absolute value of four, which goes back into this emperor number of the four. And the, the fool inverted gives me this idea of not leaping off the cliff, but of going spelunking in a cave, which is where the darkness is. And I'm still not quite sure what the ink and the phone Okay, I'm getting technology. And of course in the middle here I have technology as well. This is kind of my chariot charm. This is the flying saucer. Technology, 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 but this one was was upright. The other two came out reversed. Uh, I'm just going to turn them upside down so that I remember that they were flipped over. Now also here, I have the stop sign inverted. And I have this idea of like, don't stop believing, but also like, don't stop me now. Like, like Queen. Like, 
They call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I'm traveling at the speed of light. I'm a satellite. I'm a rocket ship on my way to Mars, which is emperor energy. On a collision course. I'm out of control. And the next lyric is, I'm a sex machine ready to reload. That's hilarious. Like an atom bomb, which is another technology. Okay, I think that's enough lyrics from that song. But it's like, don't stop my... We're... Like, I have the right of way, kind of. Like, meal born when you don't have a stop sign. So the Page of Swords inverted. This is a 1 or an 11. So we're getting winter energy with Earth of Air. And I had... I thought I had spring energy inverted, but I could be mistaken. Interesting. Oh, maybe here. Nine of Pentacles inverted. I feel like I've seen these cards already, probably um, in the, the readings I did yesterday. And the Knight of Swords inverted. Okay, so these guys go together. 9, 11, 12. Okay. 9 of Pentacles energy. Venus in Virgo. But it's inverted. Knight of Swords. Taurus and Gemini. But it's inverted. And Gemini. Gemini and Virgo. Are both ruled by Mercury. Which is currently in Libra which is ruled by Venus. But I feel like these cards are all inverted because of the Uranus retrograde in Taurus. And what's interesting is there's this flickering between the page and the night it's like, I'm trying to level up, but there's this face-off happening. And this is a feminine energy that's in the other direction, right? This is my, this is, in my inner self, I have a feminine and I have a masculine, but my ego is blocking me from leveling up somehow. Oh, I also just heard um, a little bit of Ozzy Osbourne, I Don't Want to Stop. So I feel like what's blocking someone from going into their own darkness is... is like... Er, it's, it's kind of and it's a little bit of hedonism but here it's in terms of thoughts and communication right I'm gonna like I also just heard a part in Top Gun where it's like your I think it's like your ego's writing checks your body can't cash there's a lot of bravado, which is weird because this is in the 5D. But I see this as com competing goals as well.
like too many cooks in the kitchen. I'm not quite sure what that means. I think I need a clarifier even though I already have other cards there. And I think I want one of each of these. Clarify the 5D. Okay, so this came out, the lovers inverted. Gemini energy. So a lack of healing, mercurial energy inverted. There's no choice. And this idea of not coming together. Now the Nine of Pentacles does have a feminine on it and we have a masculine and a feminine here. Sticking out of the deck, I also have the Seven of Cups inverted. This is ending of distractions. It could also be options, right? I mean, this might end up being somebody who's bisexual, who's having a hard time figuring out whether they want this or they want this. And it's like the only way to to, to enter this new... Um, like uh, mastery of your own kingdom by going inward is to figure out in your darkness what what am I actually doing? Seven of cups could be options, it could be distractions. Seven and six, thirteen, there's a death cycle, a transformation. Nine and one is ten, possibly one would be eleven here. But also 12 and 11 is 23 and 9 is 32, which breaks down to 5, which is a shift or a pivot as well. 13 would be 18, the moon, which is darkness again. Seven of Cups energy is Venus in Scorpio. So this is another... When I see scorpionic energy, especially if it's inverted, it tells me we need to go deeper. I also see a couple of places where Venus energy is potentially inverted. Venus in Virgo. Venus in Scorpio. So I, I think it does go back to Uranus retrograding in Taurus is making is is sort of trying to pull Venus with it. Which is weird. Let me get a, one of, another one of these though. There's a song by The Pretty Reckless. I think it's Somebody Mixed My Medicine. It's like a girl on his left and a boy on his right. I think this is a, this is the five D is sort of illustrating what is your darkness. It has to do with pleasure and distracting yourself with pleasures versus um, some kind of communication with a, a balanced. Um, like opposing energy, right? I'm not with you because we have complementary light and dark aspects. I'm with you because I'm trying to get my jollies. And in here, it's like, okay, well, I need to enter the darkness, but what have I been doing with my life? I don't know what it is says a perfect fit 14. Now I see 14 here and then I see another one. This breaks down to five, which is a pivot, which is what was happening over here as well. All right, so the idea is 
again, someone that's complementary. The puzzle pieces snap together and you get that full yin-yang, perhaps. So let's look at what's going on emotionally. All right, Taurus wants to be comfortable. It might not be appropriate for your maturity to keep hitting the feeder button. All right, I think this guy goes over here. Emotions, psychic intuitions. Okay, so the charm was inverted. This is the textbooks that says history and geometry, and there's a composition book on top. I'm getting a similar idea of like possibly reviewing old information, but also perhaps not looking into something, not doing work, not studying, but let's see what this is. Okay, so now I have the Knight of Swords inverted again, coming down over here. I'm going to put these this way so I know that they came in reversed. Oh, reversed. Okay. Knight of Swords energy. Taurus and Gemini. Again. I want to get another card. This is... For some reason... I, I feel like... I could feel how like muddy this reading was going to be because I had put off doing a Capricorn reading in September and I just could not get up to it and it turned out to be like two hours long and it was exhausting and it's almost like I resisted it because I knew it was going to suck the life out of me and I'm not complaining about this either I'm just saying that the energy is really sticky okay I'm clarifying this Knight of Swords in the emotional work. Now what's interesting is that the emotional work is coming down in the the directive energy. Sort of like a crosshairs. Alright, so these other cards that are clarifying this, I have the Princess of Discs inverted. So that's... Oh, I didn't even realize... That's why I'm confused. In this deck, the knight is actually a king. And in place of where the the king, no, in place of where the knight would be is a prince, okay? And the page is the princess. So this is actually a king in this deck. And he's on the move he's flying upside down king of swords energy capricorn and aquarius inverted so this is the same energy here but with the added energy of saturn i haven't been doing my homework mm. okay so the Princess of Discs, inverted. I'm not manifesting well. With the Seven of Discs, failure inverted, which is interesting. Seven of Pentacles is Saturn in Taurus, but it's inverted. Now, um, that's my time. Saturn is retrograde in Capricorn. Went direct end of September. But I think at some point between the now and the end of the year, Saturn, like in the beginning of December or some goddamn thing, Saturn's going to move into Aquarius. But if Uranus retrograde is still going on, that means that Saturn is going to be back inside a retrograde energy. And I think that's what this is. Right? 
Uranus retrograde in Taurus, trying to pull on Saturn. I'm trying to work, I'm trying to work on a new way of communicating. I have to level up and become master of communicating. Here, it's talking about emotions, but it's coming in very practical. So let's see how this is picking up in the 3D. Now right away I have the pyramid, so this ties to here, it ties to the homework, it ties to possibly past lives, but it can also represent a mountain, which is difficulty, or it could be a hemisphere. The pi ratio. Now what's interesting is that I have a circle here. This is the wheel. Okay, inverted. And I, I feel like this is talking about Jupiter retrograde, which went direct mid-September. And then I have also inverted this seed of life. It was inverted. Now I said this could be hemispheres. This is six interconnected spheres. And then I have a cross section, which is a wheel. So the, the mountain that has to be crossed is to generate something, to generate movement in a situation that's kind of seems like it's stuck. Okay, buy one, get one free. Number 177. So I see the 7 and 7 making 14, which is temperance. Which is also Sagittarius or Jupiter energy. I see possibly 8. which is either strength or justice, depending. Either way, it breaks down back down to Venus because Venus is in Leo right now. And justice is ruled by Venus. Libra is ruled by Venus. It also breaks down total to 15, which is Capricorn devil energy again. So there's this idea I'm getting the Capricorn energy. I'm interested in generating, having more stuff for less resources which might not necessarily be what's happening here. It's I need to establish a new way of communicating emotional content, which would go in line if someone's caught in hedonism. I might get another card for this. Let me see what's going on here in the middle. I have a butterfly, which is representative of transformation, and I have this ring here, the precious. This could be a wedding ring, especially when I see it next to this card, which is normally all the single ladies. Inverted might have to indicate something of marriage, but not necessarily. I'm transforming the things that I want to keep close to me, or I'm transforming myself. I just look at the idea of like a mood ring. Like I'm changing my disposition. So I have the Queen of Pentacles inverted now. So 
Sagittarius, and Capricorn. Five of Pentacles inverted. This is something we'd actually want to have inverted. Mercury and Taurus. I feel left out. I feel put out. I don't feel included. Five and, and one could, could be a six, like the lovers here. But it could also be... could be six pentacles. The moon in Taurus. But it could also be 13 here. Some kind of transformative cycle, which we would see because of the butterfly as being related to death and transformation. Total 18, the moon inverted, which could be sun energy if the moon is inverted. Daylight come in me one, go home. Oh, now my battery's fucking dying. I just put that one in there. I haven't been recording that long. I sucked all the energy out of my battery. So now I have the Knight of Cups upright, which is something that we'd want to see here in the cups. The only court card that's really coming in upright. I see the Emperor here, this directive, but everything else is upside down. This tells me the Hanged Man inverted, Neptune energy. Or, which is retrograde right now. Knight of Cups. I see a ram on his shoulder. That's Aries energy. Although his energy is actually... Aquarius and Pisces. So he was already Neptune energy from that hanged man thing. And then Aquarius energy too. It's almost like the having two retrograde planet energies in him is popping him upright and he's moving forward with this ram energy that harkens back to this emperor. It's like in order to achieve the, the directive there's emotional work that has to be done, and it's like all of this kind of emotional stagnancy is kind of waking, I'm just going to say him because it's a masculine on here, waking him up to, to this, like, oh, I, I'm actually supposed to be doing something kind of energy. So let me get another one of these. I just realized the way that my handwriting is so shitty that could say a perfect fix. But I think it's supposed to be fit. Like doing drugs and buying hookers might be a perfect fix, but it's not necessarily a perfect fit. Okay. I can't make out what you're saying. Now I have another 141. Well, this is interesting. I did all the double down. Multiple frequencies of the Empress and the High Priestess. 115, so I have an 11 and a 5 or a 7 total, which was that chariot that was over here. So I did see Empress Energy coming down in here, but I haven't considered the High Priestess, although I do associate the High Priestess with Pisces, which is Neptune Energy. If this was a Queen of Swords, I would have picked her out immediately. What's the Queen of Pentacles again? Interesting. Sagittarius and Capricorn. Now, there was some moon energy here, and the moon actually technically does rule the High Priestess, which is water energy. So part of the part of the issue of a new 
mastery of communicating emotional content to yourself and to others has to do with opening up psychic intuition, which is part of what the, the cups column is about. Like, if I can't make out what you're saying, I might need to go meditate on it because you might not clarify it. If I'm my heart center isn't open, I might not be able to communicate to you with you heart to heart. So this buy one, get one free, I think is actually saying if you put effort into achieving emotional clarity, it comes with psychic clarity and you can't really sever the two. If you're having a hard time opening your heart chakra, you might need to work on the psychic clarity for a while, which is where these thoughts and perceptions come in up here in terms of mastering it with all the, the swords up there. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with that now. This is supposed to be a fairly simple reading and it's turning into a kind of a hot mess. I'm going to put the, the uh, silicone band back on this stack here. I'll probably have to get into it again. Okay. So we're going to get into the actual swords column of the thoughts and perceptions. Put this over here so I don't lose it. Um, okay. Let's see what the directive is. Prince of Wands inverted. Another inverted thing. So this is the knight in this deck. All the knights in this deck have chariots that they're riding. So this is like a junior energy of the emperor, kind of. He's coming in with summer energy, but he's inverted. It's like, I need to know what the cold tastes like, and it kind of goes in, in line with this, left out in the cold. I'm, I'm fine. I need to think about the other polarity. If every day is a sunny day, what's a sunny day? There has to be a season where everything kind of descends into darkness. Everything sort of dies and then it rises again in the spring. So the energy coming down for thoughts and perceptions is what is the fallow season for? Now I have a tree upright. Now the way that I drew this, this is like, I think it's, is it deciduous when they lose the leaves? I think the idea of a maple tree, right? Where it's like you can run the, the sap in the buckets, but you have to wait a certain point in the winter to do it. <sighs> I have three charms that are inverted. I have the t-shirt. Design your own expression. I have the narwhal, which is kind of an ace of swords, but it's able to be in the water. He's upside down. And I have this pig here. S sniffing for truffles. He was upside down. So Just getting a little bit of like I pity the fool. I <laughs> pity the fool. Um What the fuck is somebody doing with their car out there? Um When I see some kind of a whale or cetacean 
inverted, it gives me the idea of going deeper. And I also have this idea of I'm trying to find out what's going on in the fallow season. Now with this pig here, I'm going deeper, I'm looking for truffles, but here I get this idea of like I'm uprooting something. What's the t-shirt for? This one kind of confounds me. I haven't gotten, like, this and the llama, the meanings all, aren't always clear to me. But I'm like, why did I draw this? It's like, because I was told to. <laughs> um, oh, okay. There's multiple layers of the inf of information available and if you only stay in the sunlight you're only skimming the surface and I do get some idea of like uprooting something right I'm pulling up the bulbs for the winter I'm digging for the root issues I'm trying to learn what happens in the underground so I can enter the darkness with elegance. It's, it has, like, there's a mindset of, okay, I'm not going to go and be where it's summer all day, every day. I'm going to sort of move with the seasons and understand how cycles work so that I can get the movement by having this, um, is it recursion when you hit the same peak of the wave and then it gets bigger? I think that's what it is. So the way that this is coming in in the 3D, which is a little bit convoluted, but maybe I'll get some clarity. Take a well-deserved rest, right? The fallow season, 426. So I have the emperor number, the high priestess number, and that lover's number there. This emperor, king of all kings, the high priestess, gaining the insight, and then six, which is a healing or a sort of a working together and a choice, right? I'm making a dis I'm taking I'm taking the choice to rest, but I also have six and six, which is twelve, which is that hanged man energy, right? Maybe I'm gonna take a nap upside down on the tree for a little bit and see what comes through. Obsessed with your stories, social media and manipulation. Okay. So this comes back to the phone over here, right? I keep going back and reviewing all these messages and it might be a little obsessive. It's like I'm supposed to be resting but I'm dicking around on Instagram. So we have, I didn't fully believe, and then I have this additional word over here, dragon, which puts me back in this fire energy over here. 403, so I have the emperor, the empress, and the fool right in the middle, breaking down to seven, which was that chariot number. I'm not quite sure what that's doing. Oh, okay, okay. The Obsessed with Your Stories, it has the Emperor number, it's 432, so it's the Emperor number, the High Priestess, and the Empress together. Breaks down to 9, which is the Hermit. Virgo energy. Ruled by Mercury, which is currently in Libra. Okay, so I'm taking a rest, but I'm dicking around on social media. And perhaps rightly understanding that a lot of it is manipulation and I didn't really believe everything I heard on there so maybe some of it's not true right I'm trying to figure out different perspectives what the dark side of stuff is not always taking things that are shiny at face value so getting the rest you need will, will help sort of balance out these energies of ruling your own area but also getting some nurturing and some psychic insight as well 
Let's see what this middle stuff is. Okay. King of Swords, upright. Interesting. So this is the same guy, and now he's upright. And the page and the thing are over here. Ten of Rods. and the devil. So I have 10, I have 14, or possibly one, and then I have 15. So this could be an 11, and that could be break down to a six. 10 of rods is Saturn and Sagittarius. So I feel like some of this is coming from the south node energy, because there's a lot of Gemini in here as well. North node, Gemini, south node, Sagittarius. It's it goes from pole to pole from pole to pole. All right, so you can cut the Earth in half at the equator, or you can cut the Earth in half at pole to pole, and that's where you get the hemispheres, right? North, south, or you can do east and west. We cut it right at Greenwich, but in the old in ancient technological Earth society, there. Um, Prime Meridian was at the pyramid. So the, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, the, uh, the nodes, right? It's sort of like the earth encompassing the earth from pole to pole. That would be the emperor. I'm ruling, everybody wants to rule the world. This King of Swords kind of gives me a little bit like Genghis Khan vibes, and it might just be that I was listening to The Who, so I got this sort of like Mongolian essence in the back of my head. The album, The Garrig by The Who, H-U. It's really good. It's really good. I like it. King of Swords, again, Capricorn and Aquarius. Now he's upright. And this is more Capricornian energy because of Saturn. And then more Capricornian energy because of the devil. I'm I'm getting it's telling me like winter. Right? As soon as you at least in the northern hemisphere, the fallow season is sort of peaking at the winter solstice when Capricorn season starts. And I kind of get this idea of hibernation. I saw the bear. Where the fuck is he? It's one of the biggest charms in here, and I'm not going to be able to find it now. The bear tried to shake out of the box a couple of times. Might have been for this reading, but it was definitely for another one. And now he's so smudgy, too. Um. We get a little bit of like hibernation. Take a well-deserved rest. It doesn't mean take the whole winter off necessarily, but it does mean, you know, that idea of slowing down, of collapsing in and having this sort of death alongside of the sun in order to recharge the batteries. Interestingly enough, I managed to suck all the energy out of a fresh battery trying to do this reading, which is indicative of the same kind of thing. Now, the charms that came out in here, I have the cassowary. Cassowary will fuck up your shit. Right? They will... They will... Uh, kick a sheet of plywood in half and gut you. And then we have a rooster. Now, I I don't always have a good idea of what this means when the when the cock comes out, but I get the idea of a sort of a face off between the cassowary and like a cockfighting thing. We have two things that are supposed to be air elementals. And neither one of them can really fly.
right? So it's it's like it's almost like being overly grounded prevents air energy from balancing or too much hibernation and only hedonism and no philosophical emotional interaction creates this kind of stuck feeling where the only other thing that comes up might be anger right I'm obsessed with your stories but I'm pretty sure you're full of shit so I'm gonna call you out on it but I'm not going to do any of the work I need to do to figure out my own stuff now in reverse I have the speakers Right? It's like I'm in an echo chamber over here in this this area. And then I have the necklace. Now this could be a throat chakra issue, especially because we're right here in the speaking, but sometimes when I see this I get the idea of Ursula in the Little Mermaid Disney movie where she steals Ariel's voice and she's got it here. So not only am I in an echo chamber, but I'm going to keep repeating stuff that isn't what I really believe. It's not who I really am. <clears throat> All right. When you get down to it, you know, what is the core essence? Well, you're, if you do it upright, you're pretty tasty on the Christmas dinner table. <laughs> you know, like, there's, there's more involved than just being a sack of meat. And this Capricorn energy is pressuring, right? Burdening, pressuring between being bound and being pressed. What comes out is the King of Swords in the communication column. And the part of it that's coming down is, I need to take a rest. But what's interesting is that the taking a rest, taking a rest is technically the Four of Swords. And let me see if it hasn't come out yet, because I'm going to pull it if it hasn't. Give me the Four of Swords. Because it might be over here, but I, I want it if it's not out already. Give me my dude. Where is my dude? Oh, this is a different picture than I was thinking. I was thinking of the image from um, the Morgan Greer because I was using that yesterday or earlier. Alright, so here's the Four of Swords. This is the take a well-deserved rest. This is the combining of the 13 from transformation. Whereas the king here is the next level up. He's got a one to go with the four. He's at a fifth, uh, he's at a five. All right, 10 and five is 15. When you squeeze these together, the king will pop out. So what happens is what's coming down from the higher realms into the 3D is I need to take a nap. I got to rest. I need to chill. Right? Because no matter what, you've been under some battle. And then once this... Right? I've been hit. I'm down. I need to take a nap. This is actually the king, but he's dressed up to go out... Right, this is the king's armor here. And he's going through this transformative phase. Cells are healing, his mind is healing, his spirit is healing. And he's sitting on the truth. 
And after he's done with his rest, six healing, then he can get up to there. So this is kind of the bridge to here is that what's blocking from achieving this sort of enlightenment of the light and the dark is I'm overwhelmed and I need to take a nap, <laughs> basically. It's like I should do all this work, but I am a little tired. Then have a nap and then fire the missile. I'm gonna get some water before I read the pentacles section. Okay. So, manifestation. The Magus Inverted. All right, so this is the Magician Inverted. So this is Air Energy Mercury. So this is more energy that's coming in with Mercury Inverted. I've seen, I've seen it a few times throughout here where the card with Mercury on it was upside down. What's interesting is that I have the Fool Inverted and then I have the next card over here inverted. Right? It's like... And this came out in the energy for the week reading that I did. It's supposed to be for the 20th to 26th of September. Um, but I did it late because I was sick. But this card came out and I feel like here the energy is the same. Manifestation is done through work. It's not through, you know, tr tricks and illusions and pulling rabbits out of your ass. So the, the message that's coming down with this inverted is you in order to manifest what you want, you have to co-create with the universe. You can't just try to pull a fast one and be like, hey universe, I know I'm your favorite, so this is what I want, and then, ex and then have it appear on a silver platter. You have to co-create with an energy level that's in alignment with what your soul purpose is intended. And this is what this is, this message that's coming down. It's not just snapping your fingers and having what it is. So it's coming down in the 3D. I see the peace sign here, interesting. Let me get back to that. It doesn't matter whose fault it was, 167. So I see the tower right away and then I see the chariot. I see 13 transformation and then also um, 14 temperance breaking down to five, which is a pivot. Starlight shines upon you, confirming your time in darkness is ending, 140. But alternately the number 293, I don't know what, I don't remember even seeing this card before, let alone writing it. It's probably one from the second batch of cards that I made. So 14, this card, plus the Fool, alternately 2, the High Priestess, 3, the Empress, and 9, the Hermit, which is Virgo energy, which is like the inner child of the... Uh, the Empress. It's like um, the child, the woman, and the crone. Interesting. Okay, peace. It doesn't matter whose fault it was, right? So if you're having an argument with somebody online and you're trying to call them out on their bullshit and you're like, you know what, I've had enough. I'm just going to go take a nap, whatever. The That's the communication part. The manifestation part in your physical body, you want peace and you're like, you know what, it doesn't really matter. 
I'm tower momenting and I'm going to recombine the 16 to 7 and I'm going to I'm going to move on. Um, it's, you know, I'm done with this situation. We're going to rebuild. And the tower energy is Mars, which is also the emperor over here. And look how orange these are. So let's see what this is here. It's almost like... Right, it's like, oh, it was my fault. No, it was the universe's fault. Well, it doesn't matter whose fault it was you're gonna do something different, right? Starlight shines upon you, it's oh, now I'm in line with the universe, we're, we're buddy buddy. That's opening up for co-creation, so the message isn't fully coming down, but it's like hey, I thought I was in the abyss, but now I see a twinkle in the night sky. What's, what's going on here? I'm feeling inspired suddenly. So here's the hanged man proper after calling him out repeatedly. All right, so we're starting it to oh look at the magician is like the hanged man here. A master manifester takes a break and lets the blood rush to his head. The blood's rushing to me head from help. He's all red again. He's beginning to like it. Nine of swords inverted, ending the nightmare. Mars and Gemini. Of course it is. Mars retrograde. Gemini. Mercurial energy. So that also goes to Mercury and Libra, but also the lovers as well. Nine. There's the nine again from here. Twelve. I was going to say nine and three break down to twelve, plus the two is fourteen again. Hangman energy. The sun inverted. Okay, so this is the sun inverted tells me moon energy. Leo energy. This is like a half moon, and this is like the full moon, and it's almost like an eclipse, right? A balancing of a shifting of the light and the dark, right? Time and darkness is ending. We're on the precipice of the dawn. I'm waking up from the nightmare. I'm starting to get some downloads. All I'm waiting for now is for the sun to come up over the horizon. Now, oh, the uh, charms that came out on here, I have Jupiter. That's that Sagittarius energy. That's been throughout the whole reading, that south node again. Sort of luck is starting to go on your side, right? But some of that is you don't just get luck. You can't just make the magic. It has to come out of... Uh, some of it's experiential. You know, it might seem like the luck of the draw, but it's it's sort of being in that flow to be in the right place at the right time by being in tune with the universe. So it looks like magic, but it's not really. And then in reverse, I have the back of the credit card. This has to do with like the the details, right? I'm not going to micromanage the details of this magic trick. I don't need to see behind the curtain. I'm going to let the universe do what it does. And I'm going to put out my energy for what I want to be matched with. And I also have the battery in reverse. When I let the universe do its job and stop micromanaging it, I'm no longer going to keep draining all of my energy and have to take a nap every two steps and have to keep putting a new battery in my camera. Mm. So this whole reading really has to do with opening up 
communication in a heart-centered way essentially with the universe, but it does trickle out to other people in order to co-create in a, in a way that has new understanding in a new way of interacting with the universe. Maybe, maybe it's been seen before, but may, it's new for you. And it gives you this sort of ultimate control over your destiny but it creates the necessity for a balance of heart and mind and here's the gut right the three battery power battery centers of the human body so let's see what this is. The Andean Cross, number two. So that's the High Priestess number. And we have 12 corners here. That's the Hanged Man. And then we have a portal, which we have here as well. And perhaps a moon or sun up here. So let me read this. Read it fast, because I'm only at six minutes left. The Andean cross represents the cosmology of the shaman. It depicts the four cardinal directions, and that was talking about the hemispheres again. It depicts the four cardinal directions, the upper and lower worlds, right? The light and the dark, the death and underground and dark season, winter, and then the light above ground, day world. the upper and lower worlds, and the steps to reach these realms. The hole in the center is a gateway to interdimensional travel. Where the hell was my UFO? The fuck was it? Where the hell was it? Mm. Gateway to interdimensional travel. The proverbial eye of the needle we can all go through to experience higher states of awareness and wisdom to break free of linear time. Right? So to break free from the time, you have to understand the flow of, of time to begin with in terms of the earth and the seasons. Okay? Announces the start to a great journey. It's time to raise your gaze for the mundane day-to-day -day that which until now has seemed beyond your grasp. Right? I can't make out what you're saying. But the universe is going to take care of the details. I... what? Allow new wisdom to guide you and stop trying to make sense of it all before you respond with a resounding yes. Okay. So hopefully that made sense. Alright, apparently I'm supposed to pull another one of these. I wasn't going to pull more cards, but I just heard pull another one of these. Let's see what this is about. Reading is so extra. No. Reading for... Oh, there it is. Okay. 51, the staff. Okay, so I see the magician number one. I see the five that Hierophant, Taurus, uh, Empress ruled, Venus energy, cosmic downloads kind of number. It's also a pivot, but it breaks down to six, which is this lover's number again. Healing and choice and union of the light and the dark, the masculine and the feminine. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> I also call this card Giraffic Park because it looks like a giraffe 
to me. Jurassic Park is frightening in the dark. All the giraffe swords are running wild. <clears throat> the staff is the symbol of authority. It holds the power to temper extremes. The staff helps you find the right course of action, the way of the middle, which is right through there, and aids you to maintain your balance after you begin walking in that direction. Moses carried a serpent staff through the desert, and with it he could summon the power of nature to heal or call plagues. So that is that one number, that magician energy. But there's still this idea of co-creating with nature. The staff reminds you of the impermanence of all things and that your authority must come from your deep longing to serve. Right? The emperor isn't the emperor just because he says, like, you're beneath me. He has to be balanced in the four kingdoms before he can be the king of kings, right? He's not the pen dragon because... He fucking said so. You know how to flow easily between polarities, right? The North and the South Pole. Hello. How to weigh all possibilities and instinctively select the right path. Trust your inner wisdom and take the first step on a journey that your heart has already embarked on. Knight of Cups. Use the power of the staff to unite what appears to be divided to find that delicate balance between will and surrender. Okay, so that last sentence was the was the butter zone there, all right? Will and surrender, right? It's this is what I want, but I need to co-create with the universe and I have to surrender the manufacturing of my desires to the universal energies of themselves. And in that way is the co-creation, but it's also this idea of I'm ruling my world, but I'm doing it through my, I'm doing it through the Hierophant energy, those universal downloads, and also my own personal magic, but I'm not forcing it to manifest. I'm in balance with the universe. Alright, so that's it for Taurus for October. Long ass reading. If you want to get a personal reading, let me try to zoom this in without screwing everything up. You can email me, the cat came back at camp at gmail.com. Um, the complete list of readings that I have and how much they cost is in the description box of my infomercial video, and I'm going to link that in the little um, post comment underneath this video. Uh, if you want to keep supporting my work, uh, you could always level up on Patreon if that's still available, or you can donate paypal.me slash catthedominion. I also have Cash App and Venmo. I've got prints and merch on Cafe Press and DeviantArt. I've got um, coloring books and a uh, Dark no Night of the Soul style poetry book on Amazon. I've got actual art items in my catalog. I've got more chat book packs. I've got made to order items like these foam lotuses. I've got some more stuffed animals coming and um, I have actual art items like drawings and paintings that are one-offs, like art a la carte. Once they're gone, they're gone. Um, if you're not already subscribed over on Open YouTube, um, go ahead, like, share, subscribe, comment, check out my playlist tab, my discussion tab. Um, if you want to see other astrology, I'm doing trying to do bi-weekly astrology by element on open YouTube. These are monthlies, but they're deeper. And then I have an, a whole playlist of astrological age readings as well. So that's all available. And again, if you have any trouble finding that list of readings and, and whatnot, or any other questions, the cat came back at camp at gmail.com. 
who may swadge me. Um, so stay groovy and we'll see you later. Bye.